Timmy yeah, and Brian, is. the Bahama Rican boys, right on time. Great, right on segue, time. great segue right there. <laughs> My guys. Right on time. Um, and it's the topic that everybody wants to talk about. It. We hinted it a little bit. Alex, thank you for coming in. I'm sorry I didn't get to say goodbye before you left. <laughs> um, it's, it's a little wild tonight. We're kind of all over the place, people coming in and out. But we're going to do some trade talks. So if you want us to talk about different iterations of trades, put it in a super chat. All those super chats go to the foundation. We're raising money for the Nicholas Children's Hospital tonight. We will talk about those trades if you put it in a super chat. So mm. I'm going to swing it over to Brian and Timmy, whoever wants to jump up first. What are you thinking is going on? We had some news today, late last night, the whole Celtic <coughs> jumping in the Durant. Do you think it's real? Do you think it's <laughs> fake? What is going on with that? Well, Mr. 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 Wendy said, you know, that, 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 was, that was weeks old. And so it, it's, it's classic, it's classic media posturing. Um, the Raptors and the Heat and the, I guess, who else? Because the Suns are really in it. Basically, the Heat and the Raptors weren't doing anything. And then that's where probably he's looking like, okay, we have, what, a month and a half to the training camp. Let's let's cook let's cook up these rumors, you know. But there's always the the downside to playing the media game. I had barely woken up when I saw Jalen Brown shake my head um tweet. Now I know he's sick and tired of every time a star because of Kawhi, AD, now um KD, you know, like and you, there's all we've always said that maybe you need to break up Jalen and Tatum, but they finally got to the finals. So maybe it's not time keeping together. Um, but I just think it's it's leverage, you know. Leverage to get the Heat to, to blink or get the Raptors to throw in. So basically, this was a we want bomb or Scotty Barnes type of type of leak, and I still don't think it's enough. Brian, Danny Ainge is messy. I feel like every time somebody negotiates with him, it ends up in the hands of the media. He wants to let people know what's going on and he wants to try to use the media as leverage and he knows he can get away with that because he's a media darling and everybody in the media loves him, probably except like me and a few other people. Um, not that I dislike him, but you know, I just I just the Boston aura doesn't really get me. But I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do my bits tonight because uh, this is for a greater cause. What I'm gonna say is this uh, I find the timing of it curious, and I find just everything that Boston's doing is curious because you just got to the finals. With your roster, you just upgraded. You're actually better now because you did the Malcolm Brogdon trade. You're perfectly good. You just swept Kevin Durant. And Jalen Brown was probably better than Jason Tatum for a good chunk of the playoffs. Probably during the NBA Finals as well. And then this comes out. And I understand it's Kevin Durant, but I also think Boston doesn't need Kevin Durant. They've proven that. And they did get a, they did get better anyway. So I just I just find that curious. It's also from the standpoint of, you know, trading for Kevin Durant. I mean, you know, there's a risk involved in terms of, and this is why the Nets aren't getting what they want in terms of a godfather package. He's 34 years old. He's on the first of a four-year deal. Um, you got to make sure he's going to want to play there. There is some irony in Kyrie Irving leaving Boston the way he did and Kevin Durant potentially going there via trade that I've thought about. Uh, I don't think he's going to wind up with the Celtics, but there's just a lot there that, I more than anything was kind of like, yeah, Boston. Uh, I don't know why. Like, I get it, but like, I y'all don't need to do this necessarily. Yeah, like, I don't really need to, but you know, it is what it is. I agree with that. I'm sorry I got a little distracted. The coach just texted me, said thanks for coming on, and he's down for a hundred dollars also. So that with Ethan's hundred yeah. puts us puts us over a thousand dollars. But we're not stopping there. We're still working. Nope. We're still going to take super chats. We're still going to work those donations. We're trying to raise as much money as possible for the Nicholas Children's Hospital. So I also agree with what you guys have said. I think it's a bunch of just, you know, it's Woj in the middle of the night. He couldn't sleep. He put out some reports. I, I just don't believe in it. Now, that being said, if Boston gets Durant to pair him with Tatum, I don't know what you do about those two guys on the wings. How do you guard those guys? I mean, that, that's that's pray. wild, right? Pray. You pray. Great. All the Haywood Highsmiths in the world aren't stopping that. I mean, I don't know what you do about that. Tony, what do you think about that rumor that came out today? When I saw it, and then I saw that Marcus at Smart two thirty a.m. at two thirty in an article, right? Not a tweet. Not it was an article. So I didn't see it that, till the morning. So that to me, that just screams, you know, we're using our resources to try and move a market. Which okay, that's fine. But I was thinking about it. Marcus Smart, uh, Jalen Brown. Ben Simmons on the Nets. That's what, in reality, that's what you would have, right? On the other side of that deal. <laughs> Who's watching that team? <laughs> like, 
Uh, I mean, for fun. Mets maybe. fans aren't showing up now, right? Like, are we well, are we pulling up for the Marcus Smart Ben Simmons? I mean, look, the Nets fans who also, I mean, the Nets who also had, I believe, during a playoff game, had uh, somebody play um, one of them DMX songs. I'm forgetting which exactly which one, and I should know this obviously, but I'm forgetting. They, but they played a DMX song, a very popular mm-hmm. one. Actually, I think it was just straight up Rough Riders anthem. They played it on like, you know, one of them instruments that you don't hear Rough Riders Anthem being played on. And it's not some shit that should go down in Brooklyn. Right. That um, the house organ. They're doing yeah, Rough Riders yeah, Anthem. It wasn't an organ. It was an instrument. It was worse. So it was bad. It was a halftime show. It was, you know what I mean? Like that like a lot of and people were like not even in their seats. Um they were just out and about getting pizza. The pizza's damn good at Barclays Center. I'll say that much. But look, to your point, Tony, like I just like there's a lot of poetry in this. I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think Boston should do it. It would be kind of a typical Boston move though, because like Jalen Brown does what he did in the playoffs. And granted, the heat made him look not very good at different points, but he also lit them up in, in other areas. And he was good just you know, after that playoff run, and then it's like, all right, let's try to upgrade to Kevin Durant. And it's like, I mean, I, he was kind of your best player in the playoffs. And I understand it's Kevin Durant, but Jalen Brown was just your best player in the playoffs. And he's basically yeah, basically with 10 years younger, give or take. Or nine 10 years younger. younger. You know what I mean? Like, they, it's not a move that they need to do. And I have a feeling that there's more risk than reward there, even though it is Kevin Durant. Because of where the, they're the best team in the Eastern Conference right now on paper, they are. I don't. I don't know if I believe that, right? Because they have a, a severe issue, and hopefully they they well not hopefully I hope it doesn't work out for them, but they have Malcolm Brogdon there to try and fill that secondary ball handler role, right? The guy that brings the ball across half court that isn't going to turn it over. I think Kevin Durant's pretty damn good at doing that job too. Um, for me, I'm on the other side of the fence. Why the hell did the Nets make this trade? Like what's what's the deal for the Nets? Wouldn't you rather to pick compensation package that Phoenix allegedly has out there with Chris Paul, and then you can reassert your window after you figure out what you have with Ben Simmons? Like, what's the purpose of getting Marcus? You need Grant Williams or Rob Williams, and they're not going to trade them. But those are the guys you need. You don't need Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown to make your team work. So, you know, when I was reading that this morning, this felt like all just – nonsense you know if that trade was broached and then the 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 recourse was hey we want marcus smart to make the deal work i still don't think that deal works for the nets i i want grant williams or or rob williams yeah i guess i mean i guess they say they want to put um what is it i, I don't know is it joe Sai Sai? i pronounce it properly yeah joe Sai. Yeah, yeah yeah he wanted he wants to compete he wants to put butts in seats what was the quote he'd rather have a hard working 40 win dm than superstars, you know. Um, but like you say, Ben Simmons, Jalen Brown with, with Nicholas Claxton, like it's okay. But I, I um like it's I say, clampy. It's yeah. it's clampy, it's kind of defense heavy. Maybe that's yeah. what they're they but want. The, but but what are you gonna really do in the East? You, you have you really have your 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 Boston, Milwaukee, you have the Heat, you have the Sixers, you have the Hawks. You don't you, you don't know who's lurking beneath the surface, like we shout out shout out the and mix for the play in. Um, I just feel like there's so many things that happen, so you're gonna fight to be a ninth, uh, eighth seed again. I I just don't know. Like I understand why you do not want to tank because they don't own their picks. Of course, you yeah. don't wanna, you don't want to you don't want to give another team Tatum again. You know you don't know. <laughs> Look, a mistake. if if Kevin gets traded, the only thing he needs to make sure he doesn't do is get swept again. Because if he gets traded to a team and gets swept again in the first round, all that legacy talk is out the window. He might and, want to consider Golden State just so that doesn't happen. Yeah, and and and, and I'm a, and before I toss it back to Sean here, uh, so he could like reel us in, I would say if I'm Brooklyn, I'm absolutely just trying to keep Kevin Durant. I'll trade the other dude. You know that I'll trade the other dude for like this bottle of water. But yeah, redacted. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm yeah, I'm I'll keep Kevin Durant. Like I'm gonna try to like smooth that over, whatever. But the other dude, I'm I'm done with that. If I'm the Nets. Yeah, I think I think Kevin wants to get away from him. I think that's the ultimate goal. And I don't think he wants to come out and say it because he very much is uh, conscious of his reputation. 
But I think that's and also the and also the friendship, the friendship too. He doesn't want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone else already bashes him. He wants to be the one to publicly uphold them again. Yeah, it's got to say something when he said, "I'm gonna yes, Kyrie, I'll support you if you don't get traded. I want to trade too." And then as soon as Kyrie figured out, well, no, I might stay. Kevin's like, "Well, uh, uh, well, I'm still, I still want to (laughs) go." Like that has to say something. Yeah, let me, uh, let me plug people, this. But you still have people that want him and are willing to give up, you know, first round picks and perhaps Tyler Hero. And I'm not going to do it today. I'm be good, that, Sean. I'm be is, good. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Look, I want to shout out a couple people in the last few minutes. Uh, Ross Barron, he donated. Uh, Justin Gershevich, I believe is your name. Uh, hopefully, I pronounced it right. Justin Gershevich, and then Christian Shooter. Rojas. So we've got almost uh, almost two hundred dollars between the three of those guys. So. We are very, very close on the page to being over a thousand. We know Coach Tony is donating a hundred. We said Ethan is donating a hundred, so we're right around twelve hundred dollars, as long as those, uh, you know, as long as everybody pays up like they're talking. So we'll make sure they get on the donation page. We want you guys to get on the donation page. It's in the chat. It's in the description of our YouTube. You can check that out. Click on there. It goes right to the Nicholas Children's Hospital. All of our super chats will also go there. So we're, you know, we're trying to raise money for the kids. Basically, that's what we're trying to do tonight. I want to shift the topic to the, the topic that everybody wants to talk about, except for me, Duncan Robinson. It pains my heart, you know? Everybody for months has been writing this guy off, even when the season wasn't over. What are we doing with Duncan Robinson, guys? If you had a choice right now, this moment, I'm going to give you all options. I'm going to go right around the circle. Tony, you just calm down, man. I see you, like, squeezing your fingers and stuff. Just relax. I'm a little <laughs> – go ahead. Because Duncan Robinson, you can trade his contract right now and still be in the KD sweepstakes yes. mathematically, you know, salary wise. Now, if, if Brooklyn wants Duncan Robinson, like, you know, like I love him, you know, we want him to. If Brooklyn wants him, you can't trade him. Let's say Brooklyn doesn't want him. Would you keep him or would you trade him to fill in the blank? I'm going to go right around the table. Tony, I'm going to start with you. Go ahead. I'm, I'm trading him to get some more versatility right now. Um, there's a conversation I think that we might need to have at some point uh, is with Kevin Durant, does Duncan make more sense on the roster than he does now? But I need more defensive versatility than what this team currently has on it. Jimmy. Bring me bring me Bossman 99. Bring me back the Bossman. Send him, I don't care if it's a three DM deal, two DM deal. Give up, give up no picks, but you can trade Duncan for Jay Gardner. That's what I want. The salsas. Brian. Mainly because of his contract, he absolutely, for me, cannot be on the team by training camp. It just just can't. Like you have to, you have to turn that into something, I feel like. Even though my initial thing going into the offseason was the primary focus should be trying to see what you can get for the Tyler hero, Duncan Robinson and draft compensation package. Like what's the best you can do. And if that's not good enough, then you move Duncan and maybe a first, maybe yurt, but you move the Duncan package on its own and try to get you a four. We've talked about Marcus Morris before up here. That's somebody I think would make a lot of sense um, with the offensive versatility that Tony's talking about. Um, Harrison Barnes, I think also makes sense. I think I prefer Marcus Morris a little bit more in terms of offensive versatility. And I like uh, the Jay Crowder idea too, because we've seen that work before and I think it could absolutely work again. So I think Duncan Robinson has to, has to go, unfortunately for you, Sean. It's not unfortunately. I mean, I get it. I understand at this point, like the contract, like you said, is a vehicle for a trade. Yeah, it's business. Exactly. And, And honestly, when you start thinking about the roster as it stands, there are so many guards. How do you find room for those guys to get minutes? You know, there's just too many guys in the room. Unless you're going to size down and put some of those guys at the four, that's what opens up some minutes. I know no. that was on the, you know, the five on the floor, but who are you putting there besides Jimmy and Caleb? I mean, there's just not a lot of, I mean, Haywood Highsmith obviously has been discussed, but like you can't play Vic at the four. And I know, you know, the Duncan at the four thing is, is trending. You know, Alf is going to be on later. We'll talk with him about that. I see my guy Royal in the chat. You know, nobody wants Duncan Robinson. I, I, you know, his family. I mean, there's certain people. I mean, a small section of Heat Twitter. I mean, just a silent major, you know, silent minority or whatever. But anyways, we do have another guest coming up. So we have Courtney Fallon. We're going to talk with her. Uh, she has a great bag, Bad Signal podcast. 
She's also with uh, Better Edge. We're also with Better Edge. So make sure you guys check that out. We're going to talk about Better Edge, and uh, we'll keep this discussion going, this NBA offseason, heat offseason. Courtney, what's up? You know, I have to tell you, Sean, the only person that will never give up on Duncan Robinson is Eric Spolstra. <laughs> but did, but but didn't he like when he benched him? No, I uh, no. I I think in the situationally, I think probably he was looking at his roster and realizing that Max Ruth was the better defender, and you know the the defensive discrepancies that the Heat have had for so many times. But I mean, early in the season, I remember how remember how bad Duncan was playing, and I was sending a, a text to uh, you know some people on our broadcast team, and and they were like, Spo won't give up on him. Spo won't do it. And like, I mean, it's a bad look if you got ninety million dollars on the bench. But at this point, I agree with mm. you. You gotta, you gotta get rid of them. Gotta get rid of them for training camp. I don't know how that's possible. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a draft wizard here. But um, I agree with Timmy. Listen, I heard you say Jay Crowder. First of all, they should never have let him go two years ago. He is the perfect fit for the four. You cannot size down. I know that Caleb has been, you know, ex- extremely. Um, open and enthusiastic about filling in on the floor. He came on our uh, summer league broadcast and said that he said, listen, I, I will do everything it takes. I really feel like I can fit in the floor. They cannot downsize. You need some beef up front. Amen. Amen. This is why we have Courtney on. Courtney just hits the ground running, like shot out of a cannon right into the broadcast. Yeah. We we didn't have even, you know, like Better Edge is in here it's saying Better Edge is pretty cool in the comments. They forgot to log out of their burner. I mean, who are these guys? But you know what? Let's go. Let's go. If anyone wants a hat, maybe uh, maybe the lucky winner, whoever donates the most money, I'll send them a Better Edge hat. There you go. That? Look at that. How about that? Check How about them that? out. Check them out. Yeah, there, you know, you can use our... You can use Courtney's code. You can use nope. our code. It's better. Your code. Your code. We already agreed on that. We have a fight over better who's edge. <laughs> Five Reason Sports better. Code. Listen, legal in 45 states, peer to peer marketplace, no VIG, no fee. So, guarantee where you're listening, yep. you're in the continental United States, outside of a few states like Connecticut for some reason with their, uh, their deal with um, DraftKings and all that stuff. We're still working on it, but it is legal to bet. And we have some great, great stuff coming up. Uh, for NFL season, and uh, you guys got to cover with the NBA, so why not jump on betteredge.com slash five? Five, five, five reasons. Number five. five. Number five, five. reasons. All right, $20 dude. sign-on bonus. You can use that $20. If you want to lose it quick, just follow my MLB picks because right now I can't. <laughs> I couldn't pick a winner if it was right in front of me. My WNBA stuff's doing good. Tony's doing good with the WNBA. He's better than me at baseball. No, you, guys, you guys are the you guys are the WNBA killers. I have to tell you, you know who I ran into this morning walking into Publix at eight thirty was uh, Coach Anthony Carter. Yeah, yeah. He was uh, he was getting his he was getting his Starbucks heading back and um, had his playbook and we were talking and I told him about the Jalen Brown news. He couldn't believe it. He was like, I would see that they would trade Marcus before Jalen. Total disrespect on Jalen Brown. Um, I will tell you that this com- really comes to no surprise to me. I would say no surprise because uh, a month ago I was up in Boston and Brian Scalabrini, who is a broadcaster with the Celtics and with NBC Sports Network up there, up in Boston, he had come on the he had come on their draft pregame show and said there is no better package the, the, for Kevin Durant than the Boston Celtics. So he kind of like flew that out there. And I was listening to a lot of sports radio up in Boston while it was the time. It was just ad nauseum. I had to turn it off. But they were like, why would he say this? So it seems as though, I mean, maybe he has something. Maybe he doesn't. But um, this this Jalen Brown on the trading block with Derek Wright and uh, one one first round draft pick by the Celtics. It, it, it comes as no surprise to me. But um, maybe it's just a fish in the water to get Pat Riley a little more a little more boiled up. Boil mm-hmm. his blood a little bit more. Like I said earlier, it's bas- it basically was the the bomb and Barnes signal flare. Like, okay, you 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 want to try to go to Boston, then put Scotty Barnes or bomb on the table, you know. And I still don't think those teams are going to fall for the bait. I don't think so. No, and they could probably do this once every month if they wanted to. It's Kevin Durant for Christ's sakes. As soon as he hit the market, I'm sure everybody put their second best player in a first round draft pick and an offer. Every single team in the league, yeah. so they could probably do this for a while if they want to keep leaking stuff. And even if it's a flare, it's like, all right, so now you pissed off Jalen Brown. And what's right. going to happen when you go back to training camp? You just got your chemistry right. You did a good job of turning yourself around last year. Great job turning yourself around last year, 
We thought they were playing bound at best at one point last year. They turned it around. They had a great run, went all the way to the finals. And then, oh, our best player in the finals, yeah, we might want to trade him for Kevin Durant because he's Kevin Durant. And even though he I, is Kevin Durant, that was your best player in the playoffs last year. I and do you're think gonna make him. You're going to make him in the middle of the night or the middle of the day, whenever two thirty, on a, on a, on a, on a oh, crappy, yeah, not, trust me, on a crappy I, I like, Monday afternoon in July, he's gonna tweet out shaking my head because you did that. I need you to stop attacking the end of July. I know you're having a bad time right July now. July is not. Uh, July is not. This is it's sangria season, man. You have to drink more. Sangria. I don't drink wine, like, bro. Better. Oh, that's too. I don't drink alcohol. I don't drink any oh, alcohol. Okay. All right, Tony, like, Tony's whatever. Tony's jacked up on the uh, on the on the wine and the juice and the fruit. <laughs> the, mimos- the, the, the mimosa, the, the mimosas. Fruit. It's oh, beautiful yeah. July weather, guys. He Get loves outside. the mimosas. It loves I got water. Mimosas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I mean, like back to Jalen Brown personally. I mean, I'm one of the very few up in you know of of the voices. Obviously, I covered the Heat, but you know, I, I dabbled back and I look back at that team because I looked back at the Heat this time last year with wandering eyes and thinking, I really want to go cover this team with Pat Riley and mm-hmm. made that dream come true. Total manifestation. Cheers to Tony. Cause he's all about that manifesting, you know, here we go. Um, but I, I just, I just, I really watching them. I know that Jalen, uh, Jason Tatum is just, he's the superstar up there. Yes. You know, he's, he's the star. He's the one from you cut from the cloth of Kobe, but Outside of the the you know the dribble penetration issues, the dribbling stuff that that Jalen Brown has had, um, some of the cold streaks, some of the injuries that he's dealt with, um, I just think that Jalen Brown is a more complete player. I think he's more consistent, and Fox. Jason Tatum just Fox. didn't show up in the in the finals. And I've been saying this, and I got killed by a bunch of green teamers on on Twitter <laughs> saying that. But I was like, I I would I would put Jalen Brown at the forefront of any team, and, and listen. Jalen Brown, also his new agent, is Kanye West. So Kanye loves Miami. Let's I, set him down. Hey, I, I said that. I said, look, and you know. You know that, Jaylen, that, that's a ticking time bomb right there if you think about that. I, oh, I oh, that Kanye Cor- song stuck in my head this Cordy, morning. I was like, did you see I miss the, the old Kanye. I'm did you see the photo Kanye. with, uh, with, with uh, Jalen Brown? Kyrie. Those three, I'm like, oh, that's and you, and you know, Kyrie is Jalen's mentor, that's just so perfect. that's just a that's a that's a weird. And we, we know the not. we know the power of a Jalen Brown tweet because he tweeted that the the vibe is going it's, to shift, mm-hmm. and, and it yeah. shifted. You know, yeah. we, the power. So I I I actually gave it two days and kind of rest tweets like a a, a weird <laughs> tweet like the Boston Celtics the respect. Like I could I could just see it spiraling out of control because of a, of a two thirty a.m. tweet from Wojnarowski. Like this, this has the potential to go very bad because of who his manager is. Yeah, Jalen Brown is also one of the really uh, he's in, in wildly intelligent. He is outspoken during the Black Lives Matter movement. He was one of the first athletes up there in Boston, uh, you know, a racist city, according to uh, to LeBron James. But he was one of the um, one of the forefront players that was marching um, after George Floyd. And as we say, that's. Uh, Sean, I'll t- let you take it away. We hit a thousand. Let's go. We did just hit a thousand. The last yes. donation. We want to thank our guy, Gadiel Cartagena. Yeah. He made the uh, the donation that put us over a thousand. Oh, and did we get a better edge hat. Should I send him? He gets him a one? better edge hat, and he gets to come on this stream at get nine on o'clock. Him, he's, he's at, it's it's you know what? <laughs> this is a, it's that's what we do here. You know, if you you make that type of thing, so yeah, he'll be on here in a few minutes. You can talk about it, how it impacts his life. I mean, this is great. So. Honestly, though, in a serious note, keep on donating. Please don't stop. We reached our goal of $1,000. It's been less than two days that we've done this. It's been great. We're doing a great thing for the Spolstras. Uh, you know, it's kind of cool that they're they're aware of what we're doing. I feel good about that. Yeah. We're not doing it. You know, we're doing it for these kids. We're trying to not, you know, not doing it for five yeah. reasons. We're trying to make it, obviously, to help these kids in South Florida at Nicholas Children's Hospital. You can click on the link that's in the chat. Get your donations in. Let's get it to 2000 Let's see what we can do. We got Elf and uh, Giancarlo Navis coming up here in a little bit. Those guys, it's going to get wild in here. I'm sure we'll get the super chats mm-hmm. and donations going. What other questions do we have for Courtney? Courtney, what do you see, like, in terms of the landscape of the NBA right now? Like, what do you see since we, you know, since we exited, the Warriors got the trophy. What has, you know, kind of been those seismic changes that have happened over the last couple months? Like, what, do you, I- what have you seen drastically change? I think that we're going to see um, a villain switch in the upcoming year. I feel like we're going to see a villain switch to these Philadelphia 76ers. I think that that's going to be a real gut punch to 
Um, a lot of Heat fans down here. Oh, Sean's covering his head because he lives in Philadelphia. It's yeah. going to be a gut punch to my whole life. That's yeah, so I, I really feel like they're going to, you know, it's the attention's going to turn away from the Nets. I do believe that Kevin Durant, they're not going to find a trade partner for him. I think that um, Sean Marks has just lost his damn mind. I don't think that they're really going to be serious. I don't think anyone really outside of the New York Knicks, and I don't think Kevin Durant really wants to go to the Knicks. I, I mean, like, what's going to happen when the Knicks get – Kevin Durant or they get Donovan Mitchell, they're going to be out in the first round. So um, the only team that really has those first round picks, I, I think that there's going to be a villain switch. Um, uh, Markeith Morris. I know that there's been rumors about him wanting to go up there in Philly. He's from Philly originally, but he and PJ Tucker. And I, I, I mean, I just know that they're extremely close in the locker room. It was funny. One of that last like game six video, um, PJ said that he went up with Markeith. And they went up to Jimmy and they're like, yo, Jimmy, we need 50, you know? So, you know, the two of them, although he did spend the majority of the time, you know, injured and on the bench, I think that um, he's looking for a redemption story. So I think that the Sixers are going to get bigger and badder. And, um, you know, I mean, there's just, there's, there's going to be that, that wild card, you know, for the rest of the league right now. I, I do think I, I like, there's a team that I really like, and I know that I'm not saying that they're going to be, you know, competing for the East crown. But um, the Detroit Pistons, I really like. Yeah. I really, really like what they got going on. Um, you know, Jaden Ivey, that story, if anyone else didn't cry on draft night, watching him get drafted fifth overall by the Pistons. His mother was uh, played for the Detroit Shock. His grandfather, who passed away, he played for the Detroit Lions. Um, Kate Cunningham, um, a, a lot of those kids, those young up-and-coming kids, I think that they're going to be a really good team and a really good force to be reckoned with. But outside of that, I, I – Listen, I think the Heat got to they got to take care of their own. They got to make a deal and I don't really want them to sit here and I don't think that Pat Riley's going to, you know, come back and and be like, "All right, we're going to rest on our laurels and run it back." Even even coach Carter today, Anthony Carter, he was like, "Listen, we cannot run." He literally looked me dead in the eye at 9 a.m. and he was like, "We cannot." And a lot of the coaches also agreed, "We cannot run it back with this same team. We got to make a move and we're hoping that it happens soon." So listen, J- Jay Nivey too, a great pick for rookie of the year. They're going to have Jalen Duran and Isaiah Stewart bending teams to the rim. And they're going to have a lot of attention on Cade Cunningham. He should have opportunities to score that basketball. Yeah. That's really all that they care about for that award. So that dude, that team's going to be fun. Yeah. Before you get here, I want to know how you feel about the Hawks. Cause I still think like, I understand. Oh, I love, I love that kid. I love yeah. the Juwante Murray. I yeah. love, and first of all, that's the best, that's the best player that, that, um, uh, Trey Young has played with. I mean, like he hasn't had a superstar like that. That kid is special. Yeah. And um, I, I see, I see big things from that team as well. But I'm not really so sure. They, they traded my guy from Maryland, Kevin Herter, <laughs> yeah. the redhead, the red, red velvet. No, red he velvet. was, he, he was balling out of control during the playoffs. I was like, I kept saying I was punching Tommy Tom. I'm like, who? Where did he go to school? They're like Maryland. He went to. Oh, oh, he went to my alma mater. I didn't even know. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's, I, I think, I think that that team is, that team is going to be good, but I, I, I really think the focus is going to be on Boston. It's going to be on Philly this season. 